Can I build a fragrance website in six hours? Let's find out. The idea behind the fragrance website is to make a waitlist where people can say, okay, this is a great fragrance, I wanna have it, put me on the waitlist, and voila, we have the mails. And then we can send the mails. The fragrance market is supposed to grow over 30 billion US dollars until 2030. So I traveled through Prague, I visited some perfumery stores, some boutiques. The best scent my nose ever touched was from Diptyque Duel. It was vanilla amber touch and I thought, well, if it's such a good perfume and there's a big, big hype, maybe I could sell it. And if I sell it, then I get the money for buying it myself. It's smart, right? Not spending money, but getting something. Let's generate a big pool of mails and with those mails we see okay there's interest in for example this perfume then if we open a shop or a retail store then we could send them mails to buy the perfume right that's a good idea so we started by creating a basic waitlist page that features the perfume as well and shows a few of the features i oriented myself in this one on the apple website it's a lot of black white only the Headline elements are in colorful way and some buttons. But before we go more into detail into the UI, let's check out the pipeline. Here you see our grateful project. Our project has a lot of things. Here you can see the demo URL with which you can see the project. Of course, we have some other things below. You can find the readme and in the readme there are some important stuff if you want to use this project. For example, the structure, some initial testing and the translation. We're using slang pretty straightforward. Slang has some features. For example, you can string interpolation, use string interpolation or you can use cluster to a context. For example, I did it to the header text and under the header text there, there's a about section, there's a simplicity section and clustering it make, makes it a lot easier to use than Ltenon, Itenon, the, the regular localization package, you know what I mean. And for the rest, you see, okay, this is what your .env or your environment variables need. Firebase on this project will crawl the variables from your environment or for the .env, so make sure you put it somewhere. And is you, if you use a .env, define it as a file. And that brings us to our pipeline. Here under the GitHub folder, there are some actions and workflows that I'm using in other projects and I wanted to share with you. So if you have the pipeline and it runs on the main branch, the action will be deployed under GitHub. And the action does what it says, it first tests with coverage and then it deploys. Here I implemented the testing part, for example you see here, okay, it runs with coverage and with the environment variables, but it does not print out the testing results. This is because it's echo format and of course there is something like test coverage console. With that you can see what's tested and what's not. That would mean under here, under line 79, you would have to implement something like flutter run test cough console or maybe dart run, yeah, flutter pub run or dart run test cough console as a separate step and then it would print out the test results. Then in building Flutter Web, it builds a regular Flutter Web application. This application or these files are then uploaded as artifact and another job would then deploy it to Firebase, for example. Here you can see I have demo code for another build step for you to deploy the web app. The pipeline is just for you as an example, so I did not use this to deploy, I just used the command Firebase deploy. And now back to the sweet part. Flutter apps. It's much easier than the typical GitHub action stuff. So let's dive in. I can show you some of the components. As I told you, the Firebase options are loaded from the environment. So here in the main, which I did on Async, you see they are loaded. Let's start with the carousel widget. Very easy. It's a page view builder. With the buttons, you can navigate through the page view. The headline text is a little bit different. We're using a shader mask. And in this shader mask, you can simply set a linear gradient, three colors blue, purple, orange. Usually I'm using open font text poppins from Google. It's supposed to be very readable and good in apps. You can go down. Here I use tooltips to display the images inside containers where the edges are rounded. Going down, I have to admit the description text of Odell is a little bit tricky. I didn't do it language based so you could translate it in every language. I put different language parts like Uduel is a, then I did diptyque and diptyque in different color and then the rest of the sentence. So it was the easiest approach for a hackathon like application. Okay, for a real application I would 
probably use string interpolation. The ingredients list is a little bit cooler because in the ingredients list you can see they are also available on mobile phones. So on mobile phones they are shrinked even more and on desktop web or websites you have a little bigger view and the text is centered. For that you can just use simple if statement and is mobile which is a media query that checks the width. I recommend not using of but size of because with size of it only rebuilds when the size changes and with of everything rebuilds when everything changes. The benefit component is the only automated component in our app because it automatically changes and swipes. This is as well done by a page viewer. This auto scroll function it just repeats itself every four seconds. As well as on the top page view I cheated a little bit because you see here if you scroll right it is seamlessly but those are not three images those are four images on the fourth it jumps first one so you can keep scrolling Ooh la la, the most important and interesting feature for me personally is the fragrance is all about simplicity and quality it is in the top and it fades slowly this is done by simply animated opacity and sliver app bars because sliver app bars are super scrollable and when it's scrolled then you can see something like the language thing I used slang, German and English via Germany, super easy. When you press the shopping button, the model opens and in the model you can put your email address and some other fields. What I really liked about Gen AI, they suggested to make fragrance in the courgette, typical font with bluish color. I liked it very much. The cool thing about this app is that it uses Firestore and with Firestore you have all the data that user input in real time. It's a free and simple backend. Here you can see the just newly created data is implemented via mail, created at datum, date. You can find all the code in the repository, of course. We're just using Firebase and then push to whitelist function, where it adds the data easily to a Firestore document. I implemented that every user can write a document but not read it. So basically you can only add a document with your mail and that's everything you can do. You cannot even find it or delete it later, but it's okay because you're adding here just your mail to get notified and no one else shall see it except yourself. That sums it up for the application. Aha, uh -huh. I wanted to implement an iframe where you can see what is the transparency of Odua, but unfortunately they had a course policy which allowed our app to use their website but if you click it it just opens up as a new tab and then you say like whoa you can see it and i'm like yeah i totally did it you know as they say in canada, canada. peace out bye